Hey guys, it's Jazz Hands. So we're doing another little theater video today because you guys seem to really enjoy the last one that I did. Um, this is a very complicated set. <laughs> it's kind of hard to, uh, Ken's outfit is just really hard to put on, but we're gonna try to, you know, deal with it. And I don't have all the pieces, but I have almost all of them. So we're gonna kind of focus on doing what we have. So let's start with uh, the little theater descriptions here. This is uh, number 0873 Guinevere. Barbie will be wearing a blue velvet gown with red armlets, red brocade shoes, red and blue hat with gold sheer wimple, gold chain belt, story leaflet included without doll four dollars and then uh ken over here is king arthur ken is king arthur in his silver quotation mark costume has red satin surcoat with gold belt scabbard sword spurs helmet and shield story included without doll four dollars number zero seven seven three so these are some extra 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 deluxe outfits um, I have some of this, the Cinderella one over here too, but I don't have enough pieces to make this a video yet. So, I mean, you can get a preview of what that one looks like, but I don't have quite enough of that to really make that a video yet. And uh, this is probably gonna be a pretty long video as I desperately try to ram on <laughs> Ken's helm, which is the real problem piece. Why won't this stay up? I need to get a new easel that'll actually uh, cooperate better, I think. There. Okay, so that's up. Next part, let's go ahead and put the... We're going to do the Guinevere outfit first, and normally I do Barbie first just because I think that a lot of people prefer Barbie outfits and fashions. I mean, really, the number one reason why I'm doing Barbie first in this instance is because it's way easier to put it on first. Her outfit is nowhere near as complicated as uh, Ken's outfit is, and I have, like, almost uh, ripped his uh, helm, so... I think that I'm just going to make the video and hope to goodness that I don't actually uh, hurt it. Whoops, got to do the armlets first. Just forgetting everything, aren't I? Jazz hands. So we got her armlets to go on first, and then she can put on her pretty blue dress. And these you don't want to scratch up either. So we're just kind of... Armlets. There we go. That should be about good. Straight thread. About right. We'll, we'll call it good. Again, these are old, old, old 1964 items. And again, the Little Theater set came out only in 1964. And they're very collectible. They're very popular. People just love them. They're very high quality and they look amazing. And uh, they're kind of rare. So they're expensive. Like this set cost me like 200 bucks. So it's not cheap by any means. But uh, oh man, they just look so premium and deluxe. And they're so much fun. To see on the on the on the dolls when they're all done. Yep. Kind of pull that up now. But definitely take some time putting it together. Blue thread, trying to get that off. Okay. And this just has like beautiful embroidery on it also gold trim just beautiful i love it the dress itself is very pretty too it has a uh, why is this not fitting up i'm hitting i'm hitting snags it's, this like the i love the hands on the old barbies but definitely you got to be careful because they snag everything like right here you can see uh, pulling pull that up to try and cover that up a bit there we go Old toys, guys. Old outfits. Three snaps in the back. One, two, and three. Three. There. <laughs> three, and then nothing happens. Her hat is pretty cool, and I always worry about kind of ruining her uh, hairdo when I put it on. But this, I think this outfit's kind of just made for the bubble cut. with its wimple. <laughs> Hilarious. The hat itself is gorgeous and has all that gold uh, fabric on it. It's collapsed a bit, so it uh, may not look perfect. 
and the little gather in the back isn't quite perfect either, but we'll get the idea out of her. And then she's got two little tiny shoes. Here's the first one, if you can see it, with if the camera will focus. And they are made of fabric, so they're not, they're a little more sturdy than like uh, the slippers from the Arabian outfit. And this might be another instance where I once again, every single time I gotta take off my gloves, I like, it's just more aspirational at this point. Like I started off wearing the gloves, hope I get to keep them on throughout the entire video and I end up almost always having to remove them because it's such delicate little work. But you know, at least I try. At least I have my format and I try. <laughs> I think that might be enough to make them look like they're staying on. So we'll just kind of kick her little shoes on and call it good there. You can see her ankle and everything really well at the moment. Okay, so there's her shoes. Pull off that blue thread. Because it's like, uh, it like sticks, a lot of stuff sticks to it, unfortunately. Beautiful. All right, so I'll get that up. Oh, don't fall over. For all that work I did. <laughs> okay. All right. Guinevere. King Arthur's Bride. And that is what the outfit looks like on Barbie. Oh, man. And now we got to do Ken. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Uh, this is going to be an interesting video. And I am going to have to take the gloves off. It's complicated. It looks amazing when it's done. It's just, you know, getting to that point. All right, here we go. Oh, I actually have the little piece of paper with it too, cool. That'll be something I can actually uh, show off then too. All right, helm, pants, amazing shield, scabbard, other outfit part. All right, all right, here we go. You ready, Ken? You ready to be King Arthur? We need you. All right, so we're gonna start with his pants, which are this interesting kind of foil texture. They're, they're quote, silver, unquote. <laughs> and this is where the very first part of the issue with the outfit comes into play, because it's not open at the bottom. Like They're like pajamas, so you have to carefully fit his feet in there without uh, ripping the fabric and get it and get it all the way up. And as you can see here, there's already been a bit of a rip where uh, somebody, maybe me, maybe the previous owner of this outfit wasn't as careful with it as they should have been. So we got his pointy shoot, he's got pointed parts on, got that on, snap that in. All right, we got his uh, silver mail on, looks good. This is the next hardest part is the, uh, is it a coif? Is that what it's called? Whatever the mail on the head is. And getting this part to fit over is dangerous, and uh, especially at the face part, you can rip the entire piece if you're not careful. So let's very carefully slide it over his shiny head. So you see how it's like almost exactly the same size, and you have to be really careful getting it on, or you could rip it. like almost exactly the same size. Like it's, it's getting stuck right at the top of his head. Oh dear. Like when I first did this, I'm like, well, it was, I'm like, this is a vintage doll and it's a vintage item. So I mean, it's designed to fit. So I've got to make it fit. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Ah, oh, jeez. Here, we'll just push on this side. See if I can get it all the way on. Just a nightmare. All right, try again. Let's try going from the front this time down and see if that's better. There we go. That's, oh, there we go. So much better. <laughs> and then we have to get it to fit over his head. There we go. Got it. So that's what that looks like. <laughs> his uh, overcoat, which... It's like silk and then the mail on the inside also. And it just is open on the back, so it just slides right over. Yeah, 
guys. Sorry about the little stray piece here, but it can't be helped. It is a vintage outfit and it's not mint. It has, it was played with and buttons up all the way in the back. Come on, let's get the last button. Like the foot, like this uh, silver feels like scratchy silver that was invented around the, t that was used a lot around the time that they made these toys. Okay, it only fits in the back there. Next up we got his sword, which comes on this. And the sword does come out and it is made of plastic and mine is chewed up at the bottom. <laughs> but I don't care, because I was just happy that it came with it. <laughs> like, I don't mind that things look pristine. It's more the fact that it, they, it came with it and it was a part of it and that's what I cared about. Let's try putting it over his head. Nope, that's not gonna work. Let's try doing it up from the bottom. I think this is how it, I had to put it on last time. Yep. Can't put it over his arm. Like it's a it's it's a chore putting this on the on him. I like I like left it on him for like weeks after I did it because I'm like I don't want to take that off again. But now after I do my videos, I like immediately take everything down, put everything back, and catalog it and make sure I didn't screw anything up. So there's his uh, sword, and there's most of the outfit. Now, he's got a helm we put on his head. And again, it's another slam it on kind of thing, and you hope that you don't ruin everything. You can actually see his eyeballs through it, which I appreciate. Look at Handsome Ken with his uh, lion and detailing that he has on his plastic uh, piece here. And finally, he has a cardboard shield. So this is just a little piece of cardboard, and he hangs on to it in his hand. And uh, that completes most of the outfit. There's also this little spur that goes over his uh, foot. I only have one, though, and also I don't really think it adds anything to the outfit, so I'm leaving it off. Without having both, I mean, what's the point? Uh, that's on the wrong arm. He can't have it on that side because that's the side that he draws his sword on. There we go. So there you are. Look at those guys. Jeez, oh, that light is not helping right now. <laughs> Turn that away. There is King Arthur and Guinevere. Aren't those just wonderful outfits? Let me put my gloves back on and I'll uh, spin them around for you. I mean, these little theater outfits are just really, really special. If you can get a hold of them, they're absolutely worth collecting. Uh, we'll do Ken first since I just put them together and it was so much trouble. I mean, the detailing is just fantastic. Even on this used set, even the lion part, a great deal of it's been like rubbed off and it still looks great. Yeah, I mean, it still looks really good together. And then Barbie as Guinevere. Then we'll look at the little booklet that came with it also, since this is the uh, one set that I actually have a booklet for. I like the chain that's sewn onto the dress, because that is like a style that they had back then. All right, let's uh, pull out the little booklet, if I can get it out. So I don't know too much about the booklets themselves with it, but uh, it shows like on one side King Arthur, on the other side Guinevere. So the Guinevere one matches up with Guinevere from her, and details her outfit. The King Arthur one goes from this side and oh, they have him holding the shield and the that's not right because you're supposed to have it to the opposite side, the sword on this side. You don't pull it from the same side, but whatever, it's an illustration. So uh, a Mattel Little Theater costume, King Arthur for Ken, and Guinevere for Barbie and Midge, because they had both. Um, 1963 printed in Japan, and it does open up. 
Oh, look, we can read it out loud. So I'm going to read it out loud while you look at the uh, while you look at the dolls. It says, uh, a royal surprise, Guinevere and King Arthur. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, over 800 years ago to be exact, there was a beautiful town in England called Camelot. The people of Camelot were ruled by King Arthur, whom they loved very much because he was so good and just. One crisp autumn day, all the people of Camelot were excited because King Arthur was getting married. They had put thick red carpets all along the road leading to Camelot and decorated their houses with crimson and royal blue and gold hangings. Everywhere flags and banners were floating in the the warm, gentle breeze against the blue sky. The whole world looked as if it were blazing with color. There was only one gloomy note in all of Camelot, and that was King Arthur himself. King Arthur was very nervous and somewhat scared if the truth were known. You see, things were very different in the 12th century, and all arrangements for his wedding had been made before he had ever seen his bride-to-be. Her name was Lady Guinevere, and she was the daughter of a Cornish king, but that's about all he knew. When a herald messenger arrived with news that Lady Guinevere and her court were nearing the gates of Camelot, King Arthur gathered up his courage and 17 knights and went out to meet her. One of her pages drew aside the silken curtains of Lady Guinevere's carriage and she descended to take King Arthur's hand. Like that. Descending to take his hand. Uh, I lost my place. And uh, what a wonderful surprise. He was almost stunned with her beauty, grace, and her loveliness. The crowds cheered as he kissed her cheek. They were married at noon with great pomp and ceremony. Stories of the time say that no man had ever seen such magnificent courtliness as the wedding feast of King Arthur and Queen Guinevere. King Arthur's famous round table was founded that day also. The round table and its 50 knights were the chief glory of King Arthur's reign, and the knighthood reached its finest flower under King Arthur and beautiful Queen Guinevere. Okay, so you got a little story <laughs> in the little booklet. Maybe this booklet came with each one of them because it's double-sided, and that might make sense. There was also a playbook that you could get, and it actually had, like, uh, full-on rolls, and it told you which dolls to get for which role. And that would be fun for me to get. I saw it used um, online for, I don't remember how many dollars it was. And, oh, man, I thought about buying it for you guys. I thought, hey, I can get people to, like, actually make a video. And we could, like, put on one of the uh, vintage plays as Mattel wrote it and set it up. But, meh. So, anyway, yeah, that was uh, the little theater set. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing these. I'm sorry, I don't, I'm sorry I don't have more than that and that they're not complete. But aren't they, aren't they special? Don't they just look so great? I hope to see you guys for my next video. Until next time, this is Jazz Hands.